Okay, you are all threaded up and I know you are ready to get started. So, let's look at these dials across the top here. First of all, this button, when you press it down, that's your reverse. And we'll look at when to use that in just a second. You're gonna hold it all the way down. You have to hold it down and it goes in reverse as long as you're holding it and then you let it back up to go back forward. This first dial is your thread tension. This controls how much tension the discs that we talked about in here have, how tight they're squeezing on that thread. So they have little lines between the three, four, and five because that is primarily where you're gonna wanna be positioned for most sewing. As we go along, you'll see you know, how to know when to adjust it. So I'm gonna leave it at four. Now, this dial is your stitch width. And we're not gonna be concerned with width on a straight stitch because there is no width, it's just going straight across. But now when we get to a zigzag, the wider it is, the more there is from point to point. Like some of them will be little bitty and some of them will be wide. This does concern us because it also controls the needle position. If you look just above it, there are some raised diagrams. They're not in color, but if you look on your machine, you can see it. And this tells you, if you roll this wheel this way to the left, it's moving your needle to the right position. If you move it to the right, it's moving your needle leftwards. And you can actually see the needle move as you roll it back and forth. Now for this, we want the center needle position, or that's where I like to be. So I'm going to set this right in between the three and the two, where that little raised notch is. In between three and two. And then this dial over here is your stitch length. So we are go I usually use about a three. I'm gonna leave it there. This is how long your stitches are. Are they tiny, tiny, or are they really long? Now when you use a zigzag stitch, your stitch length is going to determine whether you have a really open zigzag or if you have like a satin stitch really close. This dial is also interesting because all of these extra stitches that you have over here, if you look, the first line is kind of a gray color. So when you have it set from zero all the way to four, you are selecting these stitches. See on your stitch dial, your, your pattern selector dial, how they're layered. There's an inner circle, there's a middle circle, and there's an outer circle. When you have this on one through four, or zero through four actually, you are using this top level and the outside numbers. Now when you want to use the second or third level, or the other two circles, what you do is you roll this dial, as you roll it, just keep on going. Oops, let's go the other way. Now, when you hit the SS1, that's going to be your SS1 stitches. That's the ones in the middle here. And then you would rotate your dial to pick the number that you want. When you keep on going to SS2, it's going to be this bottom row or the inner circle. So if I have this set for SS2, and I roll it, I'll oh, say over here to number 40, it says 62440. Well, since I'm on SS2, I'm getting this number 40 stitch right here. If I roll it to SS1, that's number 24, I'm gonna get this feather stitch right here. And now that I'm going back around here, to the one, two, three, four, I would be getting stitch number six, which is a stretch zigzag. So let's get it set for straight stitching, which is this first, and I'm gonna put my length on three. I'm gonna choose stitch number two, so I'm twirling around to the number two, okay? And make sure your needle's in center position. Then let's get some fabric and put it under here and see what it does. Okay, I'm going to put my fabric under the needle and I have it, I'm putting it just a little further past where the needle is gonna go in. Let your presser foot down. Now, 
I hold my thread tails off to the left for my first few stitches. That keeps them from getting drawn back into the machine. I'm not pulling on them, I'm just holding them tightly. Come over here to your hand wheel with your right hand and you're going to turn it towards you until that needle goes into the fabric. That's the best way to start. And then you'll just give your foot pedal a little pressure and away you go. And then you can let go after the first few stitches. And you are sewing. Now, when you want to turn a corner, what you need to do is turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle is down into the fabric. Lift the presser foot up and spin your fabric where you want your next seam. Then let that down and you're ready to go again. And you made a perfect corner. Okay, so now that we're through, I'm going to spin the hand wheel towards me and that little notch that's on here, I'm going to line it up with the crack that's in the machine. That makes sure that my needle is in the highest position. And then lift the foot. Now you can pull the fabric out to your left. Now if it doesn't come, if it feels like it's stuck, check your hand wheel because most likely you're not quite in the highest position and it, it hasn't turned loose of the thread yet. So you can pull it on out. Now over here on your side, this is a handy thread cutter. So you can just snip off your threads. Now when you are making a straight seam, a lot of people like to lock their seam. And this is how you're gonna do that. Well, there's three different ways. So the first way, you put your fabric in so that the, the fabric is just barely, you know, right where the needle is going to go in. You can see it under my foot. It's just barely past the, the opening there. And put your needle in. Hold your tails to the left. And you're going to take two or three stitches forward. Then you're going to hold down your reverse button. The reverse button and give it a little more gas and take about three stitches backwards. And then you're ready to go forward. Now at the end of your seam, you can repeat that process with the go back a few and then go forward a few and that locks the other end. Now, okay, so let me get this out and I'll show you method two. Method two is quite similar, just a little bit of difference. On this one, you're gonna put your fabric way back, like a half inch past where your needle is, and let your foot down, go in. For this method, since you're already deep into your seam, you hold the reverse button down first and do your few stitches, and then you let that up and go forward. That reduces the bulk because this method you have three lines of stitching and that one you only have two. And then the same thing at the end, only you're just going to go, you're gonna go in reverse and then stop there, okay? Now, method three, which is takes a lot longer but you don't have any bulk whatsoever, is just to sew your seam and remove it. Now, this is the seam, this is the seam that I did. If you flip it over, and that's a hot mess over here, but if you find your bobbin thread over on the other side and you pull it, it's going to pull a loop up from the other side. 
and you can pull this loop through like this then you can tie these two threads in a knot and you see on the top side you have a really beautiful ended seam I usually use this method when I'm top stitching or something because I don't want it to show that I've gone back and forth across it but you just tie those two in a in a little knot and you're good to go alrighty then I hope you are making some wonderful things hit that subscribe button for me if this was helpful because we are going to go through all these stitches eventually so check back with me. We'll have more videos up soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.